John and Mary went into this pet store. They were looking for a kitten. When they got inside the store, there was a parrot there. And the parrot shouted out, you're fat and your wife's ugly. <laughs> they moved further around looking for the kid. They heard the parrot again and said, you're fat and your wife's ugly. They went and got the manager and said, this, this uh, parrot you got here is really rude and obnoxious. So the owner came out, took the parrot out of the cage. He beat him up, pulled him down on the floor, <laughs> put him back up in the cage and said, if you ever do that again, I'm going to kill you and throw you over there in the garbage can. So Mary and John got the cat. They were going toward the front door and they heard the parrot kind of ruffle its fingers and, and then the parrot say, you know <laughs> okay, one more <laughs> maybe, maybe I can improve on that one <laughs> uh, there's a cat and a rat they both died on the same day, and they went to heaven. And uh, the rat was going around heaven just looking, and he ran into St. Peter. And St. Peter said, how are you enjoying it up here? The rat said, well, this is really a big place, and it would be better if I had some skates. So St. Peter gave him some skates, Lord, and the rat took off. The next day he saw the cat, and asked the cat how he was enjoying it up here. He said, I really am enjoying it up here, especially that Meals on Wheels. (laughs) 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 I'm still thinking about that first one. (laughs) Very good. The uh, subject for today, for today's meeting, the theme of today's meeting is speaking skills. I'm going to spend just a minute and talk about speaking skills, and I'll intersperse some speaking skill ideas through the course of the meeting. The first thing I wanted to talk about was scripts. How many people, talk about parody of a speech, a speech that you're using a script on and a speech that you're not using a script on, and that would be a written out, full length version of everything that you're going to say. How many of you, when you do your speeches, think you should write out everything? Sometimes. All words, and how many think you should work off of an outline? <laughs> how many think it just depends? <laughs> it does. There's a, there's a great article in this month's Toastmaster magazine on that subject. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of the speaking courses that you'll take, I know when I took speaking back in undergraduate school, they taught you go ahead and write out your whole speech. And I think if you have a photographic memory, that's perfect. But if you don't have a photographic memory, what you're going to do, and what I've noticed that I do, is I want to remember every word that I've written versus trying to be natural with the audience. So what I tend to do is is be looking down too much trying to read versus building rapport with the audience. Mm -hmm. So most of the speaking professionals today say work off of an outline, not off of a completely scripted speech. And one of the things that's really important in speaking is to memorize your first minute. So be able to get up there for the first minute and be able to deliver that minute in a very comfortable way so that you know exactly what you're going to say. And if you can do that, that first minute's usually where the jitters come. And by the time you're through that first minute, you're, you're rolling into your speech. So make sure that for that first minute, you've got it memorized so that you can get up there and really deliver that first minute properly. All right, our first speaker today is Mr. Mark Van Kempen. This is our speaker's ninth lecture, and it's focused on persuasion. Our speaker requests that you write down your emotions throughout the speech on the critiques. This is somewhat out of Mark's comfort zone, so your feedback is extremely important to him. Our speaker labels himself as an intellectual candyman. He served in the Navy for 20 years and taught over 2,000 students. He's our newly elected president, and we're all grateful for that, Mark, and a visionary member of the Global Information Network, which he's going to explain to us today. So without further ado, I present our speaker, Mark the Shark Guy, Van Kampen, and his speech, You Don't Know What You Don't Know. Mark. Do you feel 
like you really work hard? Yeah. Yes. Do you feel like you should be more successful than you are uh -huh. right now? Yes. 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 Well, there is a problem, a dirty secret, if you will. You don't know what you don't know. Now, I explain that dirty secret in a little, a little bit later. But one of the first things you find out when you join the Global Information Network is that you don't know what you don't know. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you how to thwart the opportunity. Wow. <laughs> I should have memorized my first minute because I already, I already jumped to paragraph. I'm going to give you a little brief history of how I joined the Global Information Network. My parody is not doing well today from what I have here and what I'm doing. But once again, I joined the Global Information Network a couple of years ago, and I'm going to tell you how I came about being in the Global Information Network, or GIN, as we like to refer to it, because it's a little bit shorter on, on time and words. As a state of our Toastmaster, I spent 20 years in the Navy. What most people don't know is about halfway through my career, I felt that I achieved all I could in the Navy. I was a recognized technical expert. I had been in several leadership roles, directly supervising people, and had been ranked the number one sailor for my area in my squad. This made me very proud, but I was also very frustrated. I've been eligible for promotion a couple of times, but I hadn't been able to make it. People knew I was working hard, they knew I was working smart, I was leading people, but I was still very frustrated, just kind of like those opening questions where I think we all can relate to that. We've worked hard, and yet we don't feel like we've attained what we, we should in life. Can everybody kind of relate to that? I see two heads mm -hmm. nodding. Good. Well, I can distinctly remember one commanding officer using this phrase over and over again to validate his decisions. Perception is reality. Anybody heard that before? Yes. Okay. Great. The problem is my perception was different than my commanding officer. And of course, being the number one ranked sailor at the time, I like to express my opinion. I thought I'd earned that through all my hard work and everything. But what it did is it got me labeled as a whiner. That's the commanding officer. You can't question what he's telling us. Now, I almost got out of the Navy because this was really, really touching me hard that I was working so hard and really not getting ahead. But my wife talked me into staying in and I, and I toughed it out for the family. And to testify it for myself, I was part of an organization that was really truly trying to make the world a safer place. So I, I kind of had that, that I'm, even though I may not be living up to my full potential, I am working in an organization that has a higher purpose than myself, which I think is really, really important to everyone. Now, fast forward a couple of decades, not a couple of decades, but fast forward a decade and a few years, we'll, we'll say that, and I'm out of the Navy, I'm working hard, now I'm making even less money fixing copiers, I'm hanging underneath airplanes, running wires, I'm doing all this work, but now I'm not working for that big organization. I'm not working for that big goal. It's simply I'm making money to support my family, which, which is a good goal, but at the same time, it, it still left me a little bit empty. But what happened next changed my life forever. I got a really strange letter in the mail. It seems that a group of very influential people had found out about me. How to this day, I still don't know. Uh, a lot of us, we got asked to join this organization. Still have no idea how they found us, but they did. They gave me a one-time offer to join their group because they were building this a very special people. Now, honestly, I thought at first this was a scam. But I was only gonna have to buy a book. Actually it turned out being three books. And what really got me, what intrigued me, sucked me in 